You're not always distracted. You're only distracted when the work you're doing isn't important enough to you. Now, if a person you care about has a heart attack, you'll immediately take them to the hospital, right? You'll never ever have a problem with distractions in those moments. You won't check your phone, you won't get bored, you won't procrastinate. Why is that? Because helping that person is important to you regardless of what's happening around you. There's always going to be distractions around us and I don't wanna just tell you guys the basic tips and hacks to remove them. Instead, I want to show you how you can naturally train yourself to think like you do in those important moments, how you can become highly focused and gradually become more and more consistent with doing the things that you care about. Cement your priorities. If someone asks us about what we wanna accomplish, all of us come out with the biggest ambitions we can think of because, you know, we all hear about success, aiming for the top, and who doesn't like the idea of it? But do you really want what you say you want? Or are you only doing it to show the world, to talk about it? Be honest with yourself. Because if you're working towards the things that you truly desire, then distractions naturally melt away after some time of working on it. And let me tell you something else. 90% of the time, it's not people and things that distract us. It's you who distracts yourself. You have an exam tomorrow, but you think, you know what, oh bro, I got the whole day. I'll get to it at some point. So tell me, who's distracting you there? Getting bored, anxious, getting tired. Those are the things that distract us. And the reason these things happen is because our priorities are not set. It's as simple as that. Only once you set your priorities in complete honesty with yourself, only once you reach the realization that, damn, clicking on YouTube in the middle of work and doom scrolling in bed just isn't as important as what I most want to be doing today. Only once that clicks in your head will you even be able to start to resist these distractions. And no, this is not motivation. Don't get motivated. It should act as a realization. Really just become crystal clear on your priorities. That's it. What do you most want to be doing today? Six months from now, five years from now. Magically become consistent. Now, once you know that you're working towards the thing you most want to be working on, what's the key ingredient that you need? Consistency, right? But what does that mean? Does it mean you start Start something and have the expectation that it's just gonna go like this. Is there anyone in the world like that? Who has no setbacks, just progressing upwards and onwards happily ever after? No. True consistency is when you work your butt off and have those successes along the way, but also have just as many dips and fails. And despite that, you keep going with it bit by bit. That to me is consistency. So yes, you will get distracted. We're all very prone to it. But only if you consistently do the work that you've prioritized will you slowly, gradually train your skills and start to find curiosity and interest in what you're studying. Those are the normal non-hacky ways of getting rid of distractions. The delusion of progress. Progress is a powerful but dangerous motivator, honestly. Especially for me, I'm an extremely competitive person. And in the past, when I've cared about something but didn't see progress the way I want, Wanted to, it just became this thing that I didn't want to do anymore, where I'd easily get distracted and then just want to quit it. But the solution here is simple. Number one, instead of tracking things like your grades, your uni acceptances, your weight, instead of measuring progress with these outcome-based trackers, track it with the things that are in your control. Like the amount of times you did cardio this week or the amount of hours you worked on math today. Play that game instead. And two, if you aren't able to see progress, then shrink that goal. Don't just think I have to do two hours of intense maths every day this week, or if, and if I don't, it's a fat L. To start, just do 30 minutes a day. That's doable, right? Then ramp it up to 45 minutes. That's an hour. Progress is all up here. And when you start to reframe the way you think about it, you'll naturally start to build more interest, you'll become more passionate about it, and that's when you'll start to get into the flow state. This is when you're just focusing on one thing, nothing around you matters. It's just you and your thoughts, and you're just doing. It isn't easy to achieve, especially if you are someone who easily gets distracted. But practice is the first part of it. Only once your skill level matches the challenge of the work that you're doing, will you be able to get into the flow state. Because when you start studying, once you start building on that skill, that's when you'll start to get distracted less and less. It goes without saying that this practicing needs to happen with your phone face down, airplane mode on, and you be being in an environment that is conducive to focus. But as we all know, it isn't just about getting rid of the distractions, because as soon as I lose focus, it won't matter where my phone is. I'm not dumb. My brain will always find a way to get distracted anyways. That's why we need to learn to practice to get into this flow state with our work. One practical thing I remember making a difference initially was using a stopwatch instead of a timer. Having a timer, doing the Pomodoro, it's too restrictive. Like I don't want something to tell me when to start and stop studying. Instead, time yourself with a stopwatch because nothing really interrupts you and it's much easier to stay in the flow then. It becomes like a game and as a bonus, you can measure your progress and keep pushing yourself to do more and more until of course you need a break. But what most of you don't know is that there is a smart way to take a break and then there's the screw it all type of breaks. Maintaining that flow should be key 
throughout your entire study session, including the breaks. Unlike what most people say, switching off completely and doing anything to relax isn't what your break should be about. But you may be asking, how do I stay focused on my breaks? I'm not even studying. When you're in a flow state, the activity in your brain causes the slow release of dopamine, there's more endorphins, more serotonin, all the things that implicate that fulfilled feeling we get from the inside when we pursue our goals. So when you're tired and need a break, don't just abandon that focused mental state that you've created by jumping on TikTok and distracting yourself to that next level. Instead, do stuff like walking around your desk or the library or doing some chores or listening to some music. Do the things that take zero critical thinking Thinking. that will cool your brain down but still keep you focused and active. Through this, you'll realize that building the skill of focus isn't just about your studying, it impacts every aspect of your life. Not getting randomly distracted when working out, when doing a hobby, when speaking to someone, it's all just as important. Because if you can slowly start to get rid of the temptations of distractions in those cases, then it'll be infinitely easier to get into the more challenging things like studying without getting distracted. Aside from getting distracted during the studying, the thing that hinders us most is not being able to start in the first place. And I've made a pretty useful video on how to manage the no motivation, I don't feel like studying feeling with a more practical approach. Check it out if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this has helped and I'll see you in the next one.